this place so far. Oh, yes, it's wonderful. It's such a pretty city, and there's, you know, the little bit that I've seen through the window so far, it's gorgeous. <laughs> <laughs> Are you, have you got much time in Sydney before you fly off to the next premiere? No, I'm, well, we're, well, this is pretty much 24 hours of being here. And how did you enjoy the, the big premiere last night? It was great just to see everyone's enthusiasm and just the way they had set it up with the props and everything. It was really cool. So going back to the beginning, I mean, how did you get involved with becoming director of uh, Kung Fu Panda 2? We had just finished up on the first film and they asked me mm. and I thought, well, I loved working on the first film so much that the opportunity to just essentially keep going mm. was really, really cool. So, so and was yes. it kind of daunting going, okay, we've got to kind of, this first film was such a massive hit and these characters are so loved now, what are we going to do next with them? Was it kind of a daunting it, prospect? Definitely daunting, but it, it wasn't necessarily an external mm. pressure thing because we love the characters, the crew loves the characters. and. We wanted to make sure that they stayed themselves and that we made a movie that was true to the original. Um, so that was a great deal of pressure that we put on ourselves. And how did you enjoy working with the vocal cast? I mean, obviously, you've got Jack Black, Lucy Liu, Angelina Jolie, Dust Dustin Hoffman, Gary Oldman. These are amazing people. Quite a cast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it was amazing because they're such great actors. And to be able to work with them and get these moments. I mean, there, there are moments of this movie that made us choke up in the booth, you know, just like cry. And it was just an amazing experience to see that. I mean, when you are recording, are people often together recording or do you record each vocal tracks solo? We tend to record them solo for mm. logistical, technical reasons, but they do have an actor that they are performing against. Uh, once we did have Gary Oldman and Jack Black in the room together to do the scene, the big moment where the two of them meet for the mm. first time in the movie, and they had met for the first time in there, and uh, that was really fun because they, they got to riff off each other quite a bit. Oh, you mentioned riffing there. I mean, obviously Jack Black is one of those characters who's going to go off on wild tangents and, and I assume improv all the time. I mean, how does that work with something which is kind of like animated and you've got... Ex you got to get this image that you want to get and then he's just flying off the handle. I think it's really great because we animate after the actors. Mm. We don't animate before the actors and so they do have a script to work off of but it's wonderful when they ad-lib, especially Jack because he is such a natural ad-libber. He just goes for it and he's in that moment he'll come up with these amazing call-outs for Poe and we use them. Mm. Most of the time we use them. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I mean, in terms of working with Jack Black, I mean, how much, because obviously he's Poe, mm -hmm. and without him, they really, I think, wouldn't be this film. Yes. Uh, I mean, how much input did he have into the way the, the film was going to continue in part two? I think we pitched him the movie. We pitched mm. him the idea of the film, and then he he gets the sequences, <clears> and he might come up with things to do on the spot in the moment. Um, but I think there is a great deal of trust that the actors put in us because a lot of it is invisible to them. It's mm. after their performance that yeah. a lot of the animation happens. Mm. So they just have to trust that we'll, <laughs> we'll make them look good. <laughs> and obviously you've got a history as a storyboard artist and a, a designer and animator. I mean, how has your past career helped you in directing Kung Fu Panda 2? I think it's been very helpful because, because I'm an artist and I can draw the sequences in a rough form. It's very easy to communicate with the different departments what I'm looking for. And with that clarity, they are ab more e easily able to elaborate because mm. I want them to elaborate. I mm. don't want them to be slavishly stuck to one thing. Um, so that, that sort of gives everyone the confidence to be able to explore. And was it always something you wanted to do again in the, obviously it's a amazing looking 3D film, but then you've got the, when, especially during flashbacks, you go back to more traditional kind of animation, isn't it? and that happened a bit in the first one. Is that something you were, really wanted to continue with this? Definitely, because it was one of my favorite parts of the first film, among the many things I loved about it, the ability to go into Poe's mind. Mm. And in his mind is that pushed crazy anime <laughs> style. And that is part of the language of the film is the language of Poe's brain. And we definitely had to carry that through because we do go into Poe's brain again in the sequel. <laughs> and we have to do that as part of it. Uh, and obviously, I mean, just watching the films, obviously a lot of people involved have a big love of Kung Fu films. I mean, were you a big fan? Definitely a huge fan. I used to watch Bruce Lee movies when I was mm. a kid, watch Jackie Chan movies, watch Shaw Brothers films, I watched Jean-Claude Van Damme movies all over the place. And to be able to work with some of these people is really a joy. 
Yeah, I mean, so, I mean, how did you get John Paul Van Damme in there as the crocodile? We had uh, the character that really was like, when we're trying to cast the croc, and it was a cameo role, essentially, and we're thinking, what great martial arts <laughs> master can we put in? I'm like, we need to put in Jean-Claude Van Damme. We have to do it. we got to find how we can make this work out. What's the Van Damme? Exactly. <laughs> and uh, getting to meet him in person, shake his hand and have a photograph taken, like, I had a geek out moment. <laughs> <laughs> did, you, did you find that still that, you know, you're making this big film, but when these people were coming in to record, like Gary Oldman and Jackie Chan, were you like, wow, this is pretty awesome? Yeah, I, I do go through that moment of, I am standing in the same room with Gary Oldman. <laughs> That's pretty cool. And mm -hmm. then I have to shake myself out of it because we have to get to work. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and I watched the film last night. No, in the credits, you had as creative consultant Guillermo del Toro. Indeed. So, I mean, how was he involved? He was amazing. He came in in the middle of the movie, essentially, mm -hmm. when we've gotten the movie up and we've looked at it. And he came in with fresh eyes after we've looked at it for a long time. And one thing that's really amazing about him is when somebody of that caliber that you respect and that degree comes in and says with a little bit of encouragement, you got a great movie. <laughs> and that is like, oh. So when you're tired and you're in that, that middle patch of the movie when you don't have the shots back yet, you don't know what, the, what it's gonna look like, to have that big boost of faith is quite a big thing. And I mean, would you say he was a big influence on the way you make films? Absolutely. He, he comes in, he has that enthusiasm, he had great notes, he had suggestions about how to portray the villain, and it was just a real shot of energy. Uh, is that really a really important part of filmmaking for you, that collaborative process? Definitely, because it is huge. These ships are gigantic, and there are so many people involved. And you want to make sure that every single person on the project feels that they are making the best project that they can make. And that means they have to feel involved and they have to be involved. And great ideas come out of random places. <laughs> as long as people are free to, to express those ideas, I think it's where the real magic of filmmaking comes from. I mean, you mentioned to say that you're a fan of uh, country films and like the Shaw Brothers and, and films like those. I mean, were there any particular films which influenced I think really the Jackie Chan movies were the biggest influence because that's they're all about characters that are making do with the best they can with whatever they have in the <laughs> environment and it's not like a super confident competent main character he's kind of you know out of yeah. sorts in a lot of his movies and that character travels over to Poe very well. I guess also in the use of humor and the way Jackie Chan used to yes. pick up tables and chairs and definitely and in Country Panda they picking up each other and yeah. throwing them around. Yeah, that improvisation and that bright, sh happy tone to it, that's definitely something that's a heavy influence on the Panda films. And how was it working with the boss, Mr. Katzenberg? I mean, was he a hands-on producer? Oh no, he's actually been incredibly supportive. He allows us as filmmakers to make the movie that we want. And he comes in and says, if that's the movie that you want, I have this suggestion. And never is it a, you have to do this. He has very good notes, and he's been incredibly supportive. And I think that's a testament to how, how creator-driven a lot of these films are. All the films coming out right now are very different from each other. Mm. And it's because they really reflect the tastes and, and art artistic intent of each group making it. And I guess, especially nowadays, you've got so many of these big animated films coming out, you've got to have that point of difference and make it make people want to go and see it. And also, everybody's personality is different. Mm -hmm. You get different filmmakers involved and they'll come out feeling differently. And so uh, if you were asked tomorrow to make Kung Fu Panda 3, would you jump at the chance? I would love to have the chance to get back into this world with these characters. Currently I'm on vacation, so I'm not <laughs> thinking about it very hard. <laughs> so we'll see what happens. Cool, thank you so much for your time, Ned. Thank, thank you. you.